Hey y'all, it's your girl Kamisha and I am coming with a hair video. I have not done a lot of video in so long. I don't even remember how to do it. So excuse the poor lighting because this is what you're going to get. If I start rambling, I apologize. It's not going to be edited well. So yeah, with that being said, lately, I have been experiencing hair thinning. So my roots have started to thin. I'm 40 years old. I have always had super thick hair. Thinning has never been an issue. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't take any vitamins that would thicken the hair and nails because I've always had strong nails and I've always had strong hair. However, I'm 40. I'm 40 and that is... It has come with its own set of issues. So, backstory. For those of you who don't know me, I did my big chop in 2009. I started my first set of locks in 2010. And I combed those out in 2016. And this set of locks was started um, in either late March, early April of, of 2017. So, this set of locks is seven years old. Now, excuse my attire. I'm in my gown. I have not been awake long, but I'm about to do some things with my hair. Okay, so this is where my hair is now. It's right here at the top of my butt. But this is where the problem is. You can see my scalp. I have never been able to see my scalp. So um, I guess a few months ago, I was like feeling in my hair and I hadn't retwisted for a while. And I was like, mm, it was a little bit sketchy up in there. Um, like I'm seeing some of my scalp and I've never been able to see my scalp. But I was like, oh, maybe it's my imagination because I'm going to tell you that first set of locks, I babied the absolute shit out of those locks. I did all of the, the um, rosemary treatments, um, the bacon, the apple cider baking soda, deep cleansing, deep conditioning, uh, boiling water to make sure I got everything out of them. I babied those locks. My hair was very, very healthy, but I was also in my 20s. So now I'm 40. Now, this set of locks, I've had locks for so long that I don't think about them. You know, they're, they've always been there. They're always going to, well, I don't know if they're always going to be there since they acting up now. But I've always taken for granted that they're, they're always going to be there. And so I've seen new, new YouTubers. I see y'all. Y'all y'all done picked up the baton and y'all are running with it. Whereas most of us older YouTubers, you know, back when locks were just becoming more popular, we kind of done set down some. So this is going to be an update and a hopefully hair growth journey. So the other day I was sitting down, and you see my hair? The other day I was sitting down on the couch and I was already thinking, maybe I'm paranoid, maybe my hair is thinning. And my husband says, baby, there's a dry spot on your scalp. And then he said, baby, I've never been able to see your scalp. And I was like, mm-hmm. So it's real. Now he's noticing it. And so, um, yeah. It, it's tough. It's tough. Um, as you get older, your hormones change and all of these things, your way of thinking, you're a little bit more mature, but you still have, you're still you. <laughs> And so you're still you and you don't really think about the physical changes as much. 
and you take for granted that hair that you've already always had is going to be there. And so I'm 40. I'm kind of in the middle of like a little crisis. And so I put a poll out on Facebook and I was like, hey, um, ladies my age, have you been experiencing thinning? And I got so many responses. Um, two of the responses were from some of my locked friends on here. Um, Pam, her name is Ashley. I can't remember what her um, YouTube name is, but I'll put it here. And Shanique, like we have been... We were part of Locked Super Friends back in 2010. That's how long we've been close, even though we've never met each other. So they both were experiencing thinning. Um, Shanique did the big chop and Ashley is tending to hers. I'm not going to tell her story because that's her story. And if she wants to share, she'll put it on here. So all in all, getting information, I have decided that I'm going to do these things to try and promote some growth. And... If these things don't work, I am looking at um, Big Chop and, you know, just, you know, going short and possibly, you know, trying to get it to grow um, healthier. And if it gets healthier, you know, reattach or the Big Chop and just do loose natural and see where it goes, how my hair, you know, tolerates that. But before I do all of that, I do want to try to restore my roots. So, uh, one of the things I noticed, like I said, I neglect my hair. I'm going to have to do some clarifying treatments. I got some Dr. Bronner's Castile Soap. I'm going to be tomorrow. I'm going to do it tomorrow because I have to work today. I'm going to do a really cleansing um, wash. I do notice that when I wash my hair, sometimes I don't rinse it as long. And they said that, you know, if you leave shampoo residue in your hair, sometimes it will break. Um, we're going to go old school. Ashley put me onto this. It's the Wild Growth Hair Oil. And I remember this when I was young. This has probably probably been out since like 1820. It's old school Wild Growth Oil. So I'm going to be using this and I'm going to be alternating with Jamaican Black Castor Oil. I'm going to mix it with some fenugreek, some rosemary, and some peppermint oils when I get back. So I'll alternate those two oils. Um... I'm going to also be doing a tea, the uh, rosemary and cloves, that kind of tea for my hair and probably putting some, you know, in a, in a bottle to spritz it every day. And um, I'm also going to try to take care of things from the inside out. So one of my um, friends, she said that she used these gummies when her hair started thinning and she's about mm, six, six or eight years older than me about six years older than me. And so she said this really helped her hair to kind of grow in. So I'm gonna be doing that, making sure that I take my vitamins and my um, hair, skin and nail vitamins also with that. And we're gonna see where this goes. Um, one of the other things we're gonna do is we're gonna try to remove some of the weight off of my roots to try to give them a, you know, some relief. And so we're gonna go from here we're going to cut my hair from, you know, right here, top of my butt, to here. So, we're going to go bra strap length. Um, and we may go shorter. We may go shorter. And this is the funny thing, y'all. I was just talking to my husband, I guess about two or three weeks ago. I was like, well, babe, I might want to, you know cut my locks and go back to loose natural or go shorter and this, this, and this. But it was an idea because after having locks for 14, this, this set is only seven years old, but having locks for 14 years, you know, sometimes you want to change up, but you do grow attached to your hair. And as women, not all of us, but most of us are attached to our hair. So, this is kind of hard. It is hard. And I just wanted you guys to see. I'm going to try to get close. You can see how wide my parts seem. And like when I pull it up to here. Like. You can kind of like see through there. It's like, oh my. 
And that's a that's a that's a different thing for me because I've never been able to do that. Like I've never been able to see my scalp. In my entire life, I haven't seen my scalp. Even when my hair was getting permed. Even when my when I had bad chemical burns and it took out a big portion of my hair, you couldn't tell because I've always had my hair's been so dense and packed and I've always had a lot of it. So this is new to me and it is it's disturbing and it's it's making me have to try and accept the fact that I am getting older and with age comes changes when you're 20 and you're 25 and you're you know just turning 30 life is amazing you don't think about these things and you know people make fun of people who are older and like my grandma used to say keep living and she didn't lie because you know I have been experiencing things that I didn't ha I've never experienced in my life I'm perimenopausal so I did go through a stint to where I was in deep depression my hormones had my testosterone dropped and I was in the deepest depression, did not even know how bad it was until my therapist, you know, was like, hey, look, I was borderline suicidal. All because of hormones, not because anything was happening in my life that was so terrible, because nothing was, but it was the hormones. And so I did testosterone pellets and I'm wondering if the testosterone contributed to some of the hair loss because it did make some of the facial hair that I paid all that money to get lasered off. It did make some of that grow back. But I'm going to try not to keep y'all too long. I will try and keep you updated um, with what I'm doing. So today I have added, um, I have just put um, some castor oil in my hair. I had another oil that I was using until, my, until these oils came in. And so that's in my hair. And I had actually kind of super saturated my hair with um, olive oil. Why do I super saturate? Because I'm going to be doing a very stripping um, wash that Dr. Bronner's Castile, it strips. And so I super saturated my hair with oil so that when it does strip my hair, it doesn't strip it to death. <laughs> you know, it has a little bit of protection. And um, yeah, and we are going to see how this goes. This is the beginning of it. So this is week one and I will update you throughout. And again, like I said, here's that. Also, I have a lock tool coming and a scalp massager. The silicone scalp massager I'm gonna focus on when I wash my hair to use the scalp massager to really um, get to my, to my scalp because I do have a problem with dermatitis. I've had seborrheic dermatitis my entire life and I use um, a shampoo called Nizerol. It is also a very stripping shampoo um, because, but it does work to get the dermatitis off my scalp because it will come in like cradle cap. And I had a really bad case of it um, a few weeks ago. And I'm wondering if me scratching that and irritating kind of, you know, contributed to some of this hair loss I'm experiencing because it coats that severed dermatitis, it coats your head like a cradle cap. And even after you wash it, you know, you can pick that up and it'll be big, big flakes. And underneath your scalp is all raw and red. You know, so I've been battling that and I finally found the shampoo that works with that. So I'll be alternating those. I will also be doing a rosemary, clove, and fennel seed. I'll be making it tea and I'll be doing those, that type of treatments. Um, I will, once I add the oils to my hair, I will be sitting under a dryer and letting that really penetrate. And then so one scalp massager will be for when I wash my hair. And the other one will be just to stimulate my scalp. So like I said, fenugreek, rosemary, and peppermint oil. All three of those are designed to bring um, circulation to your scalp. And to stimulate the hair follicles. So we're going to see where this is going to go. And I will do a better video with maybe better lighting but maybe not. I don't know. I'm I'm out of that YouTube phase. But I did want to share this journey. All right, y'all. 